This video is sponsored by Brookwell's Parts and Accessories. That's a Land Rover Parts and Accessories, of course, and they can supply you anything that you need. Okay, hello, welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. We're now carrying on with uh, the differential or the final drive stripping and overhauling. I uh, got one on the bench and we need quite a few tools for this job. Unfortunately, one of these is a dial gauge for checking run out on the crown wheel. And the other job it does is to check for uh, backlash between the uh, pinion and the crown wheel. Okay, you also need a fairly decent set of pullers. Now you can buy these fairly cheaply from 4B4 before. And uh, without stripping your diff, you might as well not touch it, basically, because you have to pull components to bits to check them and to replace bearings. So a fair few tools here. And there'll be a few more I'll show you. So don't go stripping any diffs until you've watched a whole lot of this. And then you can decide what you're going to do with your differential. One place we're going to get unstuck is using LRT510187, which to check the uh, pinion um, torque to turn. And uh, you need quite a sensitive piece of equipment. We also have a substitute, uh, which is... A this plate here for um, winding off and adjusting up the uh, the carrier bearings. Now you can buy this from Forby. Um, it's really important. So anyway, on the bench here, I've actually managed to at last get a, uh, a vice fitted. And I got one to rotated. The diff is clamped in there. And this is to help me so I can uh, film it comfortably for you guys. Uh, it swings through 180 degrees. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about is run out. You've done it on brakes, or presumably you've done it on brakes. Um, dial gauge is set up so you can see if at all the uh, crown wheel is buckled. And this is quite important. Remember the last video I showed you was to check whether to see your teeth were in mesh? Well, this is also because some people might off-road their vehicles and bend the... Uh, plate and it won't go straight again but basically what we're doing we're looking for uh, run out on this and we just set the stylus up and look for the maximum amount of run out this works out at 0 0.07 in total run out now for setting backlash uh, or checking backlash and we're going to do this before we stripped backlash should be between 0 0.076 and 0 0.117 of a millimeter okay now the backlash i'll show you this is just the uh, amount of slack there is between the pinion and uh, the crown wheel before it takes up drive so um it's lash basically now what you want to do is to move the crown wheel without moving the pinion so it's just touching and uh, basically we measure this by setting a stylus up on one of the teeth Okay, now sometimes these styluses are really hard to zero in and we're not looking for a massive amount of movement. And basically this is the sort of movement we're going to see. Okay, so I gave you the figures earlier and I'm just setting this at zero. And then I'll move it so it's about 0 0.1. And then, yeah, okay, 0 0.11 of a millimetre. Okay, so uh, that's what the backlash is. So it's uh, best to do a few measurements before you strip them. When you put it back together, um, you have a better idea where you're going to. Now I have a punch, which is four millimeters. And basically the roll pins, whether it's this type or the, the uh, lever over type, you knock the roll pins. You can either knock them out or just knock them back. That's on both sides. This will allow the caps to be uh, undone. Okay, we're talking about the bearing adjustment caps, these things here. Okay, so I'm just going to be lazy here and do them off. I'm not removing the bearing retainer caps. That will be done in a little while. Okay, I just need to show you something first. Okay, so I'll crack those and loosen them off. Now, LRT51018-5 is an adjuster tool. Now, hang on, I'll just tap these so they come free. And we have the Forby tool, which is a substitute for that, which aids to undo them. Now, technically, you could actually take these off, um, the caps off, and just let them drop out. However, you will need this tool for setting up, or you need something that will be able to wind these caps back in to set the preload on the uh, bearing, uh, on the differential carrier. 
Yeah, so basically you can see there it's actually holding a uh, bearing race in, okay? Um, we can now go ahead and remove these caps. Just remember before you remove them, you need to mark them so you know which way round they go and which side they are, okay? I've marked two, two on one side and this one has got one, one. So I know exactly where they're going back to. So you understand that. Don't take them off because they are machined. You have to mark them before you take them off. They're machined to the housing. Okay, so we'll remove those. And uh, yeah, you can see there, there's the bearing race that it retains. Okay, and it's the same on the other side. And then it's just a matter of lifting this whole unit out, which is the crown wheel and differential carrier. What you've got left in there is the pinion. Okay, now I need to show you something about this pinion before we go any further. So basically, pinions are either minus three, zero, or plus three, and they will be marked on the pinion head what they are. Now this is to do with in relation of setting the pinion up, or the pinion height. Now there is another marking on here as well, which is a number, which is, uh, in this case, is, well I'll show you, that's 391, and it has no uh, pinion height marking on it, which means it's standard. Uh, height not minus three or plus three you can see three nine one here as well these two are machined together and you know that they should stay together okay now I'll just have a quick look at the bearings uh, before we uh, get everything messed up to see what sort of uh, job it's been doing now I did notice on this one it, it actually hasn't been running a hundred percent true just watch you can see there's a shiny part there, so either the bearing race isn't manufactured correctly or it's been running properly, uh, improperly. Okay, so you can see the wear in this and where it hasn't been wearing. Okay, so this is the sort of thing you're looking for as you're taking the thing apart. Now this little tool here is a um, um, torque to turn. This is kilogram centimeters and what it basically does, it measures how much force is needed to turn something, okay? Now I've just put a little bit of resistance on this and it actually moves the needle. This isn't that sensitive but it is a, a slow increments on this. And basically um, that's okay, I'm happy with that. Now what I have here is a uh, flange holding tool. I told you about this in uh, different videos, this is also from Forby. Um, you could use a real McCoy which is really expensive. So just take the uh, pinion nut off and then the flange okay so what you then have is you have the pinion free and you can remove it from the housing just like so okay and then you also have a uh, collar a step collar right the bearing the other bearings still in there and we need to be able to get this out before we can do anything now this is a tip with the uh, seal is to knock it in a little bit so it distorts it and freeze up the other side so you can actually pull it out, okay? Otherwise it can be a bit of a pain, and that's easy. Just be aware that there's also a shim with that bearing that's just dropped out, okay? Um, you can see bearings get dirty. Now, in the housing you have two bearing races. You know how to take wheel bearings out. Now this isn't exactly the right way to do it, but we're not very cultured here because the uh, Land Rover equipment is very expensive for removing these bearing races. So you have a nose cone bearing and you have the, uh, the, the bottom bearing there. The bottom bearing here also has a shim. Now, what you'll probably find is you've done what I've done straight away. You've whacked the shim plate, okay? Um, not a good idea to damage this. You can see that's got a little bit of a nick out of that. And it probably needs changing anyway, but we'll see. We've got to do some measurements yet. That's where it starts to get complicated. Now, uh, basically, yeah, that's one out, and then the nose cone one uh, will knock out as well. I'm using a uh, an inexpensive chisel, and it's soft. Not that it matters, because we're not using the bearing races again in this one, because they're worn. I'll just knock that out, making sure I don't damage the housing at all. So that's out. And there you go, basically that's stripped. Okay, so we have the bearing race here, which is the nose cone bearing. Okay, that's two of them. Thing is, with these, best to use brass drifts and make sure you don't damage this. And just to show you what a brass drift looks like, there you go, two of them. 
Anyway, pullers. Now, Land Rover show one of these type of pullers in a later Discovery 2 type manual. Okay, they're expensive, very expensive. But if it's repetitive work, then fine. We have to settle for um, second best. And these bearings need pulling. Okay, so we have a bearing puller kit. And in the bearing puller kit, you also have a ball bearing, which will fit just like that and pull nicely, or that's what it should do. Any shaft should have a uh, recess for bearings. Anyway, what we have are um, bearing clams or clamps. I'm not actually sure what they're called, but basically two halves, they clamp underneath the bearing and then you uh, fit the rest of the puller and then that should technically I pull the bearing off. Uh, these are interference fits. Some bearings are harder to remove than others and uh, it very much depends on the mood I suppose of the bearing whether it wants to come off. Some are really really hard to remove and you have to resort to uh, desperate measures. In this case um, this has two sides to it and you can use it either way um, depending on what bearing you have. Now I usually use it like this because it cuts underneath and then pulls the bearing and the flat part sits on the shoulder now you can see the bearing is damaged okay just there because the um, cutout is not exactly perfect this is not the right tool for the job but it's good enough to do okay you can't sit it squarely in there, uh, not unless you've got the exact puller for the shaft, and they can be, as I say, very expensive, but we have to make do. Fitting it this way, you can't really bite into the underneath of the bearing because it, it's uh, um, just not the right way around. So basically what I'm doing is uh, setting it like this, clamping the clam up, and this is gonna have to be as tight and as equal as possible. So. Um, it's going to pull on the bearing cage and not so much on the bearing race underneath it because it can't grip it, but it will go somewhere close to it, okay, so you can see that, okay. Um, you have to take your chance with these tools. Generally, I've already pulled about four sets off and it's worked okay. Again, you can buy these from 4 before. 4 before and I would say that it's suitable for the job, but not for a workshop where you're doing massive amounts of bearing pulling. It's just not made for them. But the occasional job, a couple of diffs, or maybe a gearbox as well, no problem. Okay, so basically you have your, your puller arm, or your T-arm, whatever you'd like to call it, and the extensions, which I've set up. And with threads, always, 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 put as much oil on as you can because this helps hydraulic action and lubricates it as well so basically we have this setup for uh, pulling the uh, pinion bearing off and uh, I'd say that this is on marginally it's on tight and you can't use hammers it's just silly because basically you're going to damage the teeth so you do need a puller I know people use other wonderful ways of doing things and I've also smashed the bearing cage and then welded around the uh, race and then knocked it off but that's in desperation anyway so what we have here set up in the vice and it's just basically pushed the pinion through as you can see I'm uh, well you probably can't see it, I'm just using a normal half inch drive ratchet 17 mil socket and it's going okay usually you feel a crack just like that and then it's okay you know that the bearing is going to come off if it doesn't then the tool will probably slip so just be aware of that um, keep your fingers out of the way for things that might drop on your fingers okay so that is the bearing out okay easy huh Land Rover say the LRT 51018 stroke 6 which is a boss to help you with a two-legged puller is enough to pull off the uh, differential carrier bearings. We don't have LRT51018 stroke six, so we have to use something else instead. Basically, this is a piston from a brake caliper. Now, I did actually use this. Uh, you know what this is, I'm not gonna tell you. You know what it is if you've been watching us. Uh, but basically, this is uh, good enough uh, as a substitute tool. And yep, yeah, just pull that, crack that and the bearing is going to be pulled. 
However, also what cracked as well, if you can see that crack, I'll just try and get the camera in, it's cracked as well. It's not the most reliable thing to do. However, if you've done a full set of pistons, you've got a few of them. Okay, just be aware of things can go bang. Okay, so that's okay. That's cracked and that'll come off. So just proven that this tool is sufficient for the job. All right, so that'll be both bearings pulled and then the differential carrier will be bearingless. So if you happen to tear the cage off the bearing and the bearing race won't come off, just use the uh, smaller power and then clamp it up and then that will pull off like so. Okay, if not, then you'll have to weld it off. Uh, not a very good thing to do. Now, I always advise these tools, they like you and they will work better if you look after them, clean them up, put them in the box where they're out of the way and not kicked around the workshop. So they've done the job, they're finished. Now let's get on with the next bit. So what we have to do is we have to remove the crown wheel from the uh, diff carrier before we can remove the pin off and uh, get the gears from out of the middle. Okay, so it's no brainer, it's a 14 mil socket. Um, don't, uh, whatever you do, damage the crown wheel. You can see there I'm actually using a rag on the vise. Right, so this is quite boring, so we'll, uh, I'll pull these off and then we'll go and have a cup of tea and uh, come back to this. Right, so the bolts have been removed. I kept to retain the washers and you'd be surprised actually, I cleaned this a little bit and it's got rust on it. Uh, it's amazing, isn't it? Before you remove the uh, crown wheel from the uh, differential carrier, just uh, mark it so you know where you're at. So it needs to go back in the same position. Okay, there is a reason for that. Um, this should just knock out um, by tapping it. And perhaps, maybe not with a hammer, but if you have to, use something like a, uh, a hammer handle and just knock it through. Don't use the steel part at all. You don't want to cause any burrs where the bearings have to go back on. So we've got the uh, differential um, carrier housing here and then we can undo this and take the gears out. So I'll just cramp this up loosely, okay. And then with a pair of circlip pliers, these are actually quite small. And what I'll advise you here straight away and I'll show you this is uh, get this, so you're holding it, slip the pin out, and then fit the uh, circlip back onto the pin directly, okay, so you don't lose it. It's a tiny bit, and it's a pain in the backside if you lose one, because that means you have to uh, find one off the internet or somewhere. So out come the gears. First of all, the planetary gears, and then the sun gears. Oh, and it's as easy as that. So uh, your differential actually is now stripped. So what we have on the bench laid out nice and tidy, and this is a clean bench, are components from the final drive unit. Now, so what we have here is the flange, flange nut, spacer, um, bearings from the pinion, and also the um, a, a shim. Now this shim, it could be two shims. Now, these are shims from different diffs. They probably are closely related in thickness however we may have to replace this yet because we've got to set up the uh, pinion height yet and we also have a, a preload shim as well don't lose them okay so we've got a pin for the differential uh, planetary gears and then the bearings pulled the carrier okay um, crown and pinion and they always stay together as a set and then the other parts including the caps off the uh, housing I already have a problem with the housing, so I've got a spare one here, and I will explain this in the next video, because we need to inspect this, get the bearing numbers, and cross-reference those, measure the shims up so we know where we're at.